what like so it's been a while three weeks I think now since I last made a video uh, apologies for that for anybody that tends to follow my channel uh, my head has been rather buckled the last few months uh, I think uh, the big bad Covid and the lockdowns etc are starting to get to me a little bit because I just can't really operate the way that I once did that said this came to my attention and I did think that uh, I would touch upon it you know because I for one I'm getting a bit sick and tired of these so-called anti-racist academics and experts, etc. Pumping out publications, demanding action, demanding change, and implying and insinuating that until things change, the system, our country, and us as a people are all inherently racist. Whether we know it or not, thanks to unconscious bias, etc. It just never ends. It's all systems go in Rainbow Unicorn Land, and I probably should touch upon the hate crime bill. That's another thing that I haven't made a video on, they passed that a few weeks ago, they are also planning on implementing four United Nations Human Rights Treaties and one of co one of them of course is all about race equality and do you think that benefits ethnic Scots? No it does not, it's for the BAMES of course, it's always for the BAMES uh, another one if I remember correctly is relating to women's rights because women are so oppressed in Scotland that they need additional rights, there's another one for disabled people and I apologise I can't recall the fourth the only one out of the group, though, that I would assume may necessarily need uh, extra protections if you want to go down that route would be disabled people, but BAMES and women, no, they don't. That said, Scottish schools fears racism remains a blight, warns experts. Oh, of course they do, because everything is racist here in Rainbow Unicorn Land. Absolutely everything is racist. Wide-ranging concerns are outlined in a research, in research that looks at how the teaching profession can be diversified and urges training providers to engage proactively with curricular decolonization. <laughs> the approach, which involves the reconsideration of what children learn, so it includes marginalised histories, voices and experience, experiences, sorry, has become increasingly prominent thanks to the Black Lives Matter movement. But some critics say it amounts to censorship and sanitisation. The new report, which was produced by a group of national education experts, also says a huge amount of work remains to be done to make teaching truly representative and warns many councils are failing to engage sufficiently with these issues. Scotland has a target of recruiting at least 4% of the workforce sorry, from visible minority ethnic backgrounds by 2030. <laughs> you know, so. You know, they throw out the racism card, but then it boils down to, or one of the things it boils down to, is just shoehorning in black teachers, you know. 4%. Now, why is it 4%? Well, according to the last census in Scotland, 96% of the country considered themselves to be white. 4% were not. So, we need to have on paper, in order to achieve equality, 4% of the teaching workforce in this case to be, to be non-white. But my argument to that is constantly, what happens when their population increases when they become 8%, when they become 12, when they become 20. Do we need to have 20% of the teaching workforce that are not whites? Do we need to have 20% of the police force that are not white, etc.? You know, this is a very slippery slope and because we're such an overwhelming majority currently, people can't seem to see where this is headed. <laughs> but that said, until such a time as 4% of the teaching workforce is black, that is racism. Racism continues to be experienced by BAME people in Scotland across all aspects of society, including education, the document states. Educators and leaders at all levels of the system need to approach racism as a structural issue and not just as a personal level. And then in brackets it says, that is about individuals getting on or being excluded. There is a need to become actively anti-racist. Becoming anti-racist means acknowledging that racism exists even when we do not immediately see it or understand it in our individual contexts. Of course, because... Because <laughs> it's everywhere. It's fucking everywhere. It's like the COVID. It's like COVID. It's everywhere. Whether or not you are racist, whether or not you see racism, they can see it. Because it's everywhere. It oozes out of every orifice if you're a white man. The working group, which was chaired by Professor Rowena Ashrad, or Arshad, whatever, also noted there was a growing demand for an evaluation of what gets taught in the classroom. Its report states that Scotland's BAME young people are asking for teachers of all stages of education to have the confidence to deliver a curriculum that is anti-racist. In addition, they want a curriculum that does not avoid discussions about Scotland's historical role in empire, colonialism and the transatlantic slavery, or transatlantic slavery even. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure the BAMEs are asking for that. Or maybe they are, because they're told every single day that everything's racist. 
We're told constantly how Scotland has an evil past, Scotland's role in the empire, Scotland's role in colonialism, Scotland's role in slavery, etc. We're told on a regular basis that we need anti-racism. So of course, maybe these children and these young people, these young babes are demanding these things. But I just find it a bit too convenient, if I'm honest, because this is what these people live and breathe for. People like Rowena Arshad. They sit there all day every day and get paid to type up and publicate bile. And it just so happens that apparently kids are on the same side as them. But you know, this isn't just from this uh, article on the Herald. Oh, no, 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 no. This is actually on the Scottish government's website as well. So be under no illusion that the two are not working in tandem. <laughs> you know? Teaching in a diverse Scotland, increasing and retaining minority ethnic teachers three years on. You know, this is just their little report. And it goes on to say... While the presence of BAME teachers has shown has been shown by research to benefit black and ethnic minority pupils, see for example Eagleit et al. and Gerhensen, uh, educator diversity can lead to more uh, can lead to more positive outcomes for all students. For all students, you know it's funny because they keep talking about the fact that black and BAME pupils they benefit from seeing their own when it comes to teaching. They're more likely to get better outcomes if one of their own is the teacher, but they then lump in all people. So how come black and BAME, or BAME in particular, can't benefit from a white teacher? How does a white teacher not benefit all students? How is there not better outcomes for all students if there's a white teacher? It's all in the small print, folks. Black and minority ethnic teachers bring different perspectives, life experiences, and provide students who may not be familiar with diversity the opportunity to learn from difference and to become more comfortable with diversities. People in Scotland shouldn't have to become comfortable with more diversities. You are a minority living in our country. These people are minorities living in our country. It's not our problem if there is something that you can't seem to, uh, sorry, grapple is the word I was looking for there. It's not our fault if you can't grapple with that. <sighs> you know? Uh, life experience provides students who may not be familiar with diversity the opportunity to learn uh, I. Having a diverse teaching workforce must be understood as a necessary asset for all. The misconception that race equality issues matter more for areas of higher ethnic diversity needs debunked. Ethnic majority pupils and young people in all areas are in as much need for exposure to diversity as part of preparation for future life and work. <laughs> Come on! Listen to what they're saying here, man. You know, if you're in an overwhelmingly white area, you need to. It's imperative that you are introduced to diversity as preparation for future life. <laughs> Failed by those who shape, lead, and provide education services to grapple with this is to limit the opportunities for these children and young people. Oh, because the opportunities are just climbing over themselves when you're introduced to diversity. You know, I got on just fine where I'm from, the Highlands of Scotland, probably the only place left in Scotland that's relatively untouched by the wonders that is diversity. But I am getting so fucking sick of the way that these people operate, the things that they say. All schools in Scotland need to engage with this issue, irrespective of the demographic of their own population. So even if you're in a completely white area, you still need to be taught all about anti-racism. You still need black teachers, because Rowena Ashrad has written her report the Scottish government have publicised that report and it needs to be done. You know? <laughs> because the future is BAME. Of course it is. So what better way to prepare the young whites that will soon be a, major a minority one day for a life of BAMEs, for a life of diversity. Local authorities and schools themselves can play a fundamental role in addressing this issue, but many require a much greater engagement in order to do so. Particularly those for where there are lower numbers of black and minority ethnic people and where race equality is perceived as less relevant. So the more and more BAMES in an area, the more it becomes relevant. It's funny that wherever these people go, all of a sudden this becomes an issue. It's almost as if we're incompatible, you could say. It says here, this is the final points on the uh, Scottish Government's website. Uh, whilst much has been achieved through the diversity in the teaching profession working group to create the structural conditions for change, there is clearly much more still to do in order to realise our collective ambition of a teaching workforce which reflects Scotland's diversity. You know, it says here, if I can find it, a... Uh, two seconds. Far too many tabs open, I can't find it, but nonetheless, the point I was making was that they themselves in this report acknowledged that 84% of the population in the last census identified as white Scottish, which is a term I hate, you're Scottish, you're not white Scottish, you're Scottish. 
They then go on to acknowledge that 4% acknowledge themselves as BAME, or not white, if you will. And funnily enough, it even says it here. In terms of numbers, small improvements have been made in recent years. However, the uh, 2022 population census will likely mean that the target set in the original report of 4% will need to be revised. And this is what I referred to earlier. So let's just say in the next census it's 8% or 10%, then 10% of the workforce needs to be BAME in the teaching uh, when we're talking about teaching. But this isn't just about teachers. Be under no illusion that this is just about teachers. They're doing the same in the parliament, whether it be the 50-50 women campaign, which is at least 50-50 for women in the parliament. They're now starting to push for it in relation to BAMES. It's becoming a constant theme in the run-up to this election. In fact, on the BBC the other day, there was a documentary, if you can call it that, with a bunch of non-white women complaining that the Scottish Parliament was too fucking white. Equality was written into the founding principles of the Scottish Parliament. It was designed to be modern, accessible and open for all. We in this place have a particular role This must be a parliament of Scotland's people. We must look beyond the walls of this place to the people of Scotland, but on behalf of the people of Scotland. Thank you. But the fine words and good intentions haven't led to equal representation. Women make up 51% of the population, but currently only hold 36% of the seats at Holyrood. And of the 645 members elected since 1999, there has never been a single woman of colour sitting at the parliament. And they say this as if that's because of systemic racism. They say this, the implication is that there's barriers and there's a glass ceiling, etc. You know, why is it that if there isn't 50% of the parliament that is a wo- are women, that somehow indicates inequality. It might appear equal on paper, but that does not necessarily mean that it's inequality in reality. But again, it's the constant push for non-whites now. Talat Yacoub is a long-term campaigner for equality in politics. We have never had any women of colour, and that is extraordinary. And I know a lot of people will say women of colour make up such a small proportion of the Scottish population. Because they do. And I mean, in the 20, uh, 2001 census, I believe, Scotland was 98% white. So we've dropped down a few percentage points in the last 10 years. Well, since the census that came after that, even. But to think of the parliament having BAMES when it was first uh, created with the population being 98% white. It's almost inconceivable. It's ridiculous. But of course, according to these people, no, they should have been there. According to her, they should have been there. And she goes into the percentages and she goes into how it should represent. But even if we were to look at that small proportion and look to have a parliament that was representative of the population, across the five parliamentary sessions we have had of the Scottish Parliament, there should have been at least 12 women of colour. At least. At least. You see that? At least, you know. (laughs) The more the merrier, but at least. We have had none. Ah, see. It also puts a bit of a fire in my belly as well. It speaks volumes. If that is Parliament, whether we're looking at Westminster or Holyrood or Senate, whatever, whatever we look at, the UK, any Parliament in any world, in any country, it should be a mirror image of the people it represents. You know, that, that should be like looking into a mirror. And yeah, that's a very white mirror. Oh, it's a very white mirror. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. This is Scotland. It's full of Scottish people, but they're complaining. Constantly complaining. <clears throat> we are told constantly to believe in individualism. We are told constantly not to see colour. We are told constantly not to see race. But yet, these people do. These people cannot stand the fact that nobody looks like them in that parliament. These people cannot stand the fact that majority of that parliament, the overwhelming majority of that parliament, are ethnic Scots. They can't stand it. 
because they want to see themselves. And they get a platform to complain. And the implication is that there's systemic racial injustices and racism is rife, etc. Glass ceilings, barriers, etc. When is this going to end? When the fuck is this going to end? <laughs> it's too white. I cannot believe they've got the audacity to say something like that. I can't imagine myself going to Niger or the Gambia and complaining that it's too black there. But these people, they get away with it. It's fucking mental. And one other clip on this as well that I found ridiculous uh, was her here. I wait, wait till you hear this. This is an absolute belter. Six SNP, two Liberal Democrats, two one... Con there are 10 women of colour candidates standing in May's election. Mm -hmm. Six SNP, two Liberal Democrats, one Conservative and one for the Green Party. That's the highest number in the history of the Scottish Parliament. But why in a Parliament founded on principles of equality has progress been so slow? Because when the Parliament was founded, Scotland was overwhelmingly white. It still is, to be honest. They weren't... <laughs> It's ridiculous. Oh, sorry. I think it's the perception of what leadership is and what a leader looks like. That is an inbuilt uh, racist ideology where that most of the time a white male presented individual is the most electable. <laughs> it's an inbuilt racist ideology that most of the time, a white male is the most electable, or is perceived to be the most electable. See what I'm talking about? Everything is racist to these people. I could quite clearly throw it back in their face using their own logic, their own namby pamby definitions, and say that that's racist. You have a problem with white men being most electable. If we're all one and we're all Scottish, then what is the fucking problem? But it's always a problem, isn't it? All those involved in the Scottish education system have a role to play in addressing this issue, and the working group would suggest that the following should provide a focus for action. Racism continues to be experienced by BAMES in Scotland across all aspects of society, including education. Education leaders at all levels of the system need to approach racism as a structural issue and not just as a personal level. There is a need to become actively anti-racist, which is anti-white, by the way. Becoming anti-racist means being anti-white, because if you look into anti-racism for any length of time, it doesn't take you long to find out that they are explicitly against the terminology or the ideology even of whiteness. So by its very nature, by its very definition, it's anti-white. They're against white people. They want to break down the barriers. They want to deconstruct us as a people. They want to pretend that race does not exist. And while I'm to a degree on the side of the people that are not in favour of the term white because I don't like it. I'm Scottish, I'm not white. The point remains the same, it's an attack on us. But it's camouflaged, it's disguised as an attempt to achieve equality, to achieve equal representation, to achieve a greater purpose in life for all. A happy, nambi pambi wishy-washy life. <laughs> it's fucking not. It's racism, if you're going to go down that route. Uh even when we do not immediately see it or understand it in our individual context, being anti-racist also means proactively uncovering and countering racism wherever it exists. Not just addressing racist incidents when they occur, efforts to improve diversity in the teaching profession must strongly focus on getting it right for those BAME ethnic teachers already in the profession who continue to experience significant bars and inequality in the realisation of fair work due to racism. Oh, it's, it's due to racism. No examples, by the way, but it's due to racism. So what are they talking about? Well, I've read enough of their bollocks to know what they're talking about. It'll be things along the lines of, well, they don't get promoted. Promotions are not handed out willy-nilly every single fucking day. And if a school, for example, is full of white people and there's one or two blacks and there's a promotion on the cards for somebody to become the head teacher or whatever it may be, the likelihood is a white person will get that purely down to the numerical order of that school. But if the BAME doesn't get it, it's racism. You cannot just assume if you do not get anywhere in life or you do not progress further up that career ladder, it is due to racism. And I do not fucking see how putting more black teachers into schools will stamp out the racism you claim is everywhere. If, as far as I'm concerned, it's nothing more than an excuse to shoehorn in people who theoretically shouldn't be there if they weren't worthy of the job in the fucking first place. 
But then you need to look a bit deeper into it to the things that they talk about when they suggest that we need BAMES in there for different life experiences, uh, for different perspectives, etc. So are they talking about shoehorning in BAMES who have the same ideology as them? I think that is correct to assume. Professional leader learning offers developed to enhance the diversity of the teaching profession should support participants to develop as anti-racist educators and leaders with clearly agreed outcomes leading to tangible change. Clearly agreed outcomes. <laughs> yeah. Quality opportunity? Nah, that's racist, mate. Quality of uh, outcome? Mm-hmm. BAME teachers continue to face structural bars every step of their career from considering, a t from considering teaching sorry, as a career through to applying for headship. In order to address these issues, two strands of work should be developed in tandem as follows. All institutions involved in the career of a teacher, from IT providers to schools and local authorities, should review and address the barriers in place that don't exist to support and BAME teachers to progress into and through teaching. For example, through the admissions processes used by the ITE, provide present additional bar uh, barriers to BAME's candidates. Do the recruitment policies developed by local authorities and um, apply by schools encourage and support BAME teachers, including uh, prohibitioners to remain and thrive in the profession. Such a review needs to involve BAME students, <laughs> Cadet and Farmer, BAME ethnic staff, teachers and those with proven expertise on taking forward anti-racism into education. Mm-hmm. Of course. The purpose of keeping this video a bit shorter, because I'm already at the 20 minute mark, you know, this is a rundown version of it, so to speak, where it says here that, um, <coughs> Sorry. Educators and leaders at all levels must approach racism as a structural issue and not just as a personal one. To recruit and retain BAME teachers, school leaders' ability to recognise and address everyday forms of racism must significantly improve. Teachers must be prepared to educate and act against racism. Educate and act against racism. Let's see if I can open that up. Um, I must support and sponsor the progression of BAME teachers already in the workforce. Every educational stakeholder, from those engaged in initial uh, teacher education to those who employ and promote teachers, to, to those who provide continuous professional le learning, must take responsibility and play their part. Becoming anti-racist means acknowledging that racism exists even when we do not immediately see it or understand it in our individual context and proactively uncovering and countering racism wherever it exists, not just addressing racist incidents when they occur. Racism has changed over the years. Of course it's changed over the years because you're making it up as you go along. There is still some overt and deliberate racism in society, but racism is mutated so that microaggressions and unconscious bias are now more common. <laughs> it's fucking mutated. <coughs> oh, we're a dastardly bunch of people as whites, ain't we? You know, it's becoming too obvious that we're racist overtly, so we decided to mutate it, morph it, and formulate it into something a bit more subtle. Microaggressions and unconscious bias are biases. But yet the BAME experts, they can see what we're up to. Oh, we've been rumbled again. These people are a fucking joke. They are. They're a joke. They're a malicious, malevolent group of clowns who have no intention of achieving anything that they set out to. All they care about is protecting their own. All they care about is denigrating us. <sighs> fucking hell. And of course, we have Baldy Swinney here, you know, Rowena Ashrad. Please, this is out today. The challenge to all involved in Scottish education to work together to diversify the teaching workforce, to decolonize the curriculum, and to recognize and address racial microaggressions. <laughs> oh, it's fucking mad. Beam teachers continue to face structural bars every step of their career. All institutions involved in the career of a teacher, from IT providers to schools and local authorities, should review and address the bias to support and BAME teachers to progress into and through teaching. A national offer of support with a focus on sponsorship. Sponsors do not just talent spot, but they will hold their sponsors, sponsored individuals' careers, vision in mind and invest in upward movement, should be implemented to support BAME teachers at each stage of their career, while structural barriers remain. Oh, okay, I quality folks. Effective leadership at all levels and crucial is crucial, sorry, for progress towards a more diverse teaching profession. A new national poll should be created to improve diversity and should be placed in an organization such as the General Teaching Council for Scotland. <laughs> a new national policy. <laughs> oh fucking hell. Which against which boils down to just prioritizing blacks and browns. Yeah. You know, John might be great for the job, but John's white. Mahumbuhingi from fucking Gambia. He's perfect because he's black. 
Effective use of data is key to diversifying the teaching profession and evaluating success. So annual publication of data relating to the ethnicity of teachers in Scotland should be developed. You know, it's just getting bo boring now. It is. This is equivalent to the ethnicity pay gap or the gender pay gap. So now they're wanting data to be provided to show that schools are doing their bits and burning their institutions.